Okay, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jan Rollens, and I'm the Academic Director of the International and Diplomatic Studies Program. Uh, welcome to this online open day. Uh, first, I'll tell you uh, what's going to happen in the coming approximately hour or so. And then uh, we'll have the rest of the program that is going to be interactive. So first, uh, I'll have a brief presentation telling you about the university, about the program, and about the people who you are going to meet during this online meeting. Uh, then after that, I'll ask our student ambassadors uh, to tell you something uh, from their own personal experience about uh, Prague and about uh, the University of Economics Prague. And then uh, there will be Miss Eva Griebe, who's the program coordinator, uh, and she will ask uh, the questions that you sent uh, in, in advance. And then, of course, uh, all of us will be able to answer your questions if you have any. Uh, so uh, you will have uh, the floor to ask your questions uh, and tell us your uh, stuff. So first, um, begin with my presentation. Uh, this is us. Uh, this is uh, actually me on the right and on the left. Once again, this is Miss Eva Griebe, who's the program coordinator and who's your contact point uh, now uh, when you are applying uh, for the program, as well as then if you are uh, admitted during the study, she will be your coordinator and your contact. Uh, you don't have to worry, uh, this presentation uh, and also uh, this meeting will be recorded so you will have all the information and all the context available uh, also later. So, uh, who we are? Uh, we are the University of Economics Prague. Uh, the abbreviation VSE means actually Vysoká škola ekonomická v Praze. That's the name of the university in the Czech language. Uh, the school is quite big, quite large. We have got six faculties. Uh, we have got a um, little bit more than 15,000 students and we have over 220 partner universities worldwide. The university is the leading uh, institution uh, of economics and social sciences in the Czech Republic as well as uh, uh, in the region of uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, the university has uh, received numerous awards, for example, by Financial Times or by the Ed Universal Ranking. So uh, we are, uh, we hope, and we are almost sure that uh, you will study at the right place if you decide for our program. So this is the university. Uh, the program, uh, the International and Diplomatic Studies Bachelor's Degree Program, is a three-year full-time bachelor's degree program taught in English. Uh, out of those six faculties uh, of the university that I mentioned, uh, this program is located at the Faculty of International Relations, so this will be your home. And uh, after you finish your studies, uh, you will be awarded a bachelor's degree BC, which is uh, quite well known and uh, internationally recognized. Now, why to study IDS, just in brief? So, first of all, we are located in the beautiful city of Prague. Uh, right now it's quite empty, but we are sure soon uh, the life will again uh, begin in Prague and you will be able to discover uh, the beautiful city and all what Prague offers. And of course, Prague has one big advantage for you because it's located in the heart of Europe, uh, as we uh, 
say quite often. So basically, if you want to travel all over Europe, you have got quite good connections, not only by planes, but uh, also by train or car or bus to other uh, big cities uh, and countries surrounding the Czech Republic. Uh, the program is multi and interdisciplinary. Uh, that means, yes, you will study international relations, uh, but this doesn't mean not, uh, this doesn't mean only political uh, science. It also means economics, because we are at the University of Economics, so you'll have quite a lot of uh, economics, business, uh, finance, and other courses. And then also uh, you will touch upon uh, various other disciplines like international law, international history or modern history. You will study languages, you will study uh, some uh, parts of sociology, uh, you will have a look at international security and of course diplomacy, diplomatic practice, history and diplomatic and consular law. So this is a very wide mix which we believe uh, that uh, make uh, our students to be flexible graduates and flexible for the future life and future career. Also, one of the advantages is that we are international and multicultural. There are virtually hundreds of foreign students at the universities. Uh, there are other programs taught in English and there are also hundreds of students, exchange students that come for one or two semesters every year. So you will have many opportunities to meet uh, foreign friends from all over the world, not only in your program group, but also uh, in other, on other occasions. And uh, you will meet people uh, and friends maybe for the whole life. So you'll be able uh, to make contacts for your contacts for your future. Uh, we also offer quite extensive and quite uh, quite good language uh, courses. So, uh, and these are uh, an obligatory part of the program. So you will gain uh, new language competences or you will, or you will deepen your uh, language competences apart from English, of course, uh, in other languages. You will also gain, gain valuable skills, especially business type skills in the courses that are obligatory for all university students. Uh, and I believe these skills uh, like teamwork, uh, but also independent work, critical thinking, uh, and all that stuff will be valuable for you also in any type of work or career. Uh, and after studying uh, or finishing the program, apart from being ready to go uh, to practice and work for a company or for a, a, a state institution or an international institution or body, you will also be ready for a master's degree either at our university or elsewhere. So this is, of course, uh, also one of the advantages of our program. Now a little bit more of the info about your study. So the study is uh, organized into academic years. Uh, as this is a three-year program, it will take uh, to you to study three years. Every academic year begins in September, during September and has two semesters. We call them winter and summer semester. So winter semester begins sometime in September and ends sometime in January, February each year. And then the summer semester begins in February and uh, ends in uh, June each year. And of course, you have July and August for vacations. Uh, the semester, each semester is composed of two parts. There are 13 weeks of classes and six weeks of the exam period. Now you are, I'm sure, interested in the courses that you are going to take. It will be a lot of courses since this is a three years, six semester program. 
The courses are evaluated by a so-called credits. So we've got a credit system and this credit system is uh, basically uh, uh, is basically uh, has basically the architecture of the European credit uh, and transfer system by the European Union. So those credits that you get for your courses uh, make uh, them transferable and useful also if you go abroad or if you decide later to study in any other university. These are internationally recognizable and transferable credits. To finish the whole program equals to study 180 credits, while uh, each course uh, credit uh, amount differs, but I could say that on average, uh, each course equals some six credits. Uh, and now, of course, you are curious uh, about all the courses you are going to study. So I'm not going to <laughs> go through every item in this table. I just uh, tell you that you can see here that uh, there are some courses that are obligatory on the university level. And as I already mentioned, these are the economics, finance, business courses that you have to study. And they will be mostly, uh, they will be mostly uh, located in the beginning semesters of your study. Then gradually you will also have other obligatory courses and these are program obligatory courses. So these will touch upon uh, issues from the international studies and diplomacy field. Uh, so you can see that you will study, for example, uh, international law, you will study uh, the history of uh, diplomacy, etc., etc. And these courses, uh, will be more prominent in the second part of your study. But then also you have credits for those language courses. So there is quite a lot of uh, language teaching during your program. And then of course you will have also uh, voluntary or optional courses. Uh, so you can choose uh, courses that are offered uh, it's uh, your choice. Uh, quite often these courses are also taught by visiting professors that come from abroad. They come from foreign universities and our partner schools. And in total, as I told you, this is going to be 180 credits or basically uh, on average 30 credits per semester. So this is some five courses per semester on average. Uh, the last thing I want to tell you about the study is that you will have the option of studying abroad. This is, of course, a great advantage. As I said, we've got a network of over 220 uh, universities abroad, most of them located in Europe, but also on other continents. So uh, there is this opportunity to study a semester abroad. And this uh, opportunity is also uh, financed or financially supported. So uh, if you uh, go for a semester abroad to a foreign country, you will be uh, financially supported by our university or faculty. Uh, the tuition fee of, for our program is 3,800 euro per academic year. And if you have any questions regarding that, you can check our website or you may contact uh, Ms. Greeby, the program coordinator, or me or anyone else who will tell you more. Now, uh, regarding the application process and deadline, uh, the deadline uh, for applications is the end of June, so it's 30th of June, uh, while the decision, if you are or are not admitted, hopefully will be ready by mid-July or in the second half of the month of July. Uh, the exam that you need to take, the admission exam, is a long distance exam and it has virtually three parts. 
Uh, one part is an essay uh, on an international relations topic that you need to send by email. And the other part is also a letter of motivation that you will send uh, by email. And then if you pass this part successfully, there is a Skype interview, uh, just a few minutes uh, talk during which we check your English language skills. That is, of course, more that you have to uh, send us. Uh, and if you are curious, uh, just check our website. I don't want to uh, give you the whole list of stuff that you uh, need to send right now, but you can check our website or you can ask later during this online session. So that's all from, from me for now. Uh, I'm very glad that you joined us during this uh, online session uh, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you hopefully at uh, the University of Economics Prague. This is our university campus. As you can see, it's vast and surrounded by green and uh, in the beautiful city of Prague, of course. Uh, now, the floor will be for our student ambassadors, namely Katrin and maybe Volkan, who joined us today. I'm very grateful that they could join us today. And they will tell you a little bit about their own personal experience, uh, about, uh, about their life in Prague and in the Czech Republic and about their study at the University of Economics. So maybe Catherine, if I may ask you, if you are here, if you could tell us more. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yes, um, we can. Perfect. OK, so I'm Catherine. Um, I'm studying an international management degree here, my master's degree. And I came to Prague about two and a half years ago, uh, and I'm about to graduate in summer. So fingers crossed for me. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually German. So I came from Germany, which is not too far, to be honest. But um, Prague, as already mentioned before, has a really nice location here in Europe. So um, it is really easy to go home for me, for example, or travel somewhere else which is always nice to have, um, especially in your summer month when you have some time off, if you're not doing an internship or something. So for me, um, I think I really enjoy my student life here in Prague uh, very much because the people here in general and especially the students at Vichy are really international. So, so you always have uh, some people you can connect with and everyone kind of has the same background because people are coming from everywhere else and the local students are really used to internationals so it's a really nice community um, formed at the school with the locals and the internationals all gathering together. Um, I also really enjoy here in at the university that the professors are super internationally minded and uh, in the classes it's a really nice atmosphere uh, when everyone is speaking English and kind of understands each other and um, I mean, I can't speak for your studies, but what I really liked for me was that the classes are ra rather small and it's really practical orient orientated. So um, you have really a lot of time to engage with the professors. And I think that's really nice to have that exchange. And um, yeah, also in general, Prague is for me became kind of my second home. I really enjoy the bar culture here. The coffee culture is really amazing. In, case you're a coffee fan like I am, um, I can send you all the very long lists of great cafes to go. Um, there are nice markets outside where you can go. Um, even now, we are allowed to go back, which is really nice for a change. And um, yeah, I think it's a really good city to live as a student and also as a foreigner because almost everyone speaks English and um, people are very friendly to you and you can really get along easy with everyone, which is very nice. And I think it makes it much easier to um, really arrive somewhere when you're not at home and when you're probably far away from um, wherever you're from. So I think, uh, yeah, Prague is a really welcoming city. And um, for me, it's been really great the last uh, two and a half years. And I'm sure I'm gonna miss it a lot when I'm not here anymore. Um, yeah, that's from my side. Um,
I, I don't know if we have questions later, but I'm happy to answer questions. If any, anyone has some more student life um, related questions in general, then I'm happy to answer. Okay, thank you, Catherine. And maybe now Volkan, if he's here available, if he could tell us about his experience. Yes, of course. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I am Volkan. Uh, can you hear me, first of all? Yes, we do hear you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, perfect. Uh, I have started studying my bachelor in 2014 in Weishe. Now I'm currently studying uh, my master's as well. Uh, I'm studying on the information system management. And uh, well, you can tell that the, uh, I have chosen that uh, study my master program at Weishe just because of I like I really love studying in Prague and. Uh, in Weshe, there are a lot of opportunities, and that like I really like the uh, approach from the professors and how uh, reachable they are, and uh, how many materials that are available for the students. I I have uh, from the like the 2014 that since I've been studying there, uh, I have uh, all my professors were very approachable, and they were. Uh, really helpful on any cases that I wanted to. And I really like on the other side, the living in Prague, as Catherine said, it's just, uh, Prague is a compact town, but it is really uh, nice. And uh, there are many cafes, many bars, uh, many places that, that you can go and enjoy yourself. <clears throat> and uh, one of the best thing about Prague is just that the, uh, there are very good transportation system that you can just get out of the school and you can go anywhere you want as everything is reachable within the city. And if you have any other questions that you would like to ask later on about me and uh, about the programs that you would like to get informed, especially the Turkish students, if they want to, they can reach me out and message me or send me email. You can find my email address on the Weshe Ambassadors on our webpage and just inform me if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Volkan and Catherine, once again for joining us and telling our uh, maybe future students more about the university and Prague. And now, uh, I will ask Ms. Eva Grebe, as already mentioned, the program coordinator, uh, to introduce herself and to answer some of your questions that you emailed in advance. And of course, then there will be a live discussion. If you have any questions or issues, we can discuss them later. So please, Eva, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. So the first question, like everyone before me, can you hear me? Because I do not have the feedback. Yes. OK, I great. Do. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Eva Grebe and uh, I'm going to I'm the program coordinator. Uh, I noticed uh, by watching the participants in this uh, session that some of you probably were uh, in touch with me before already. Uh, and that is, uh, I suppose, because you are applying in the first intake, which is uh, the deadline is today, midnight. So if that's your if that's your situation, you probably have received some information from me already today. And uh, do not worry, those of you who have just found out about us, we do have the second intake, and that's the deadline uh, by end of June. Oh. Um, I received some questions that you sent uh, via the form that our admissions office and the international office provided us with. So I'm going to go through those first. Uh, some of those questions might uh, be similar to the questions you came with here today. So maybe I will, by answering some of them, I will answer your question that you might have had prepared. So uh, one of the question was uh, whether, how does it work for, uh, with visa for foreigners? So once you pass our admission exam successfully and we offer you a spot, uh, that same moment we also provide you with all necessary documents for, from the university that you will need to apply for the visa. Uh, the visa process itself, we, it is not our, it, 
we do not have the authority in the visa process, but we provide with all your documents and uh, you are responsible for uh, contacting the respective embassy and consulate and starting the uh, visa application yourself. However, we will send you the documents uh, first via scan so that you know what you will also be receiving in the envelope. Uh, number of student per class was the next question. Number of student per class for the IDS program is 25. So it is small, but uh, do not worry uh, either way, whether you prefer larger classes or smaller groups, because for the lectures that are um, of the courses that are a core of your studies, you will be combined with uh, other English um, uh, speaking students and so the lectures will be large or larger and then you uh, your classes or seminars will have 25 students maximum. Next question was whether there are opportunities for study abroad within the academic program and which universities do we cooperate with? Yes, you have an option to spend a semester abroad. Uh, so you, while while you study with us, it is generally in the third year of your study at the beginning of your third year and uh, we cooperate with 220 partner universities. Uh, it is not in my scope to list them, list all of them for you, but if you go either to the IDS website or the international office website, you will find a list uh, by geography. Uh, by the continents and also by the specific schools. Uh, next question was how many Czechs attend studies in English besides foreigners? In our experience, it is usually around 15 percent, 15 percent, not half, not 50, but 15 to 20 percent Czechs that uh, join the English taught programs. Some of them uh, are Czechs who want to study in English but want to stay in the Czech Republic and some of them are who have studied abroad before, be it a high school or a college and they want to come back and continue in English. Oh. Next question was with um, admission for international students living in Czech Republic without nostrification. Uh, if I understood this question correctly, the applicant is asking whether you need to have your high school diploma nostrified or newly evaluated. Yes, you do. If it, do, if it is not a Czech um, high school or Slovakian or Polish or Hungarian, um, I think Germany, there's a presidential agreement there as well. Our lawyer would be able to help you with that. But yes, you do have to have your uh, previous degree or the education, previous education evaluated. And evaluation is something a little bit different than nostrification. Evaluation uh, is uh, a first step and could be also the last step you might need to be accepted and enrolled into our program. Uh, it is evaluated by our university, by the lawyer's office, and only in cases where there are things that are not certain, then a nostrification might be recommended. So uh, if you uh, go through the evaluation process. It is equal to nostrification, but only for the purpose to study with us at our university. Admission requirements to our program. Uh, for that, I would uh, direct you to our website uh, where in details there are the requirements. Um, you will need to write an essay, a topic of which you select uh, out of, I think, four or maybe we have five, four topics and uh, uh, you will provide us with a cover letter and oh yes, a Skype interview, a Skype interview. So there is always um, online interview. We do not 
test. Somebody has asked here which subjects are tested in the admission process. I'm going to continue on the question that I just have answered before. So even in the interview or in the essay, we do not test you from any subjects. You select a topic that is of most interest to you, and that is how we um, evaluate um, your interest and uh, uh, knowledge in the certain topic. But we do not test you from math, and we do not test you from the economics background, neither we test you from international studies background just yet at the bachelor's level. There are, are there any special requirements regarding Slovak students? Uh, requirements are the same for everyone, even for Czech students wishing to study with us in English. Mm. Next question was, uh, I already applied. So hello, if you are here, because that means that you applied by today's deadline. And I want to know if my results will be posted by May and also when the semester starts. So should you provide us with all the documents by the end of today, then we will be processing them in May, beginning of May and in mid-May and end of May, we should have the results and you will know whether you were, uh, you, whether you were offered a spot for acceptance or not. And if you were offered a spot for acceptance, we will provide you with, uh, with all the necessary documents and we will be looking forward to seeing you the latest Monday, 21st of September. That is when the semester should be starting. It is Monday, 21st of September of this year. Another question was whether the semester will start on the same date as planned. Uh, that's a good question, given the current worldwide situation uh, yes the the semester is still planned to start on the 21st of of september there will be a couple days before the semester starts a, we call it a week of uh, orientation at the university so we'll probably meet with you one week before the semester is supposed to start so uh, but the semester is still set for this with the same start date. Another question was, do students usually speak English with each other during their free time at the university? To my knowledge, yes. And I think I have just covered all the questions that were that uh, were sent via the form to the international office. So uh, if you're not afraid to open up your microphone, go ahead. You can ask us anything live right now. Yeah, we've got already one question in the chat. Mm -hmm. So if I may to answer that uh, by Anania, uh, she asks, uh, about the intra-college and intra-college extracurricular activities in the university. So if you mean student life, uh, joining other students and friends um, in various students clubs or association, then yes, they are available. Uh, there are actually dozens of them at the universities, but of course, uh, as the majority of our students are Czech or speak Czech, uh, also uh, quite a substantial part of their activities is in Czech. But yes, we've got uh, organizations that are uh, ready to uh, invite uh, also foreign students uh, and organize uh, events that are held in the English language. Uh, we have uh, even organizations that are especially focused on uh, on the topic you are going to study. So we've got, for example, an organization that is called uh, Junior Diplomat Initiative. And we have also uh, the Model United Nations uh, uh, Club uh, at the University of Economics in Prague. So basically, 
uh, these uh, offer events like meetings with uh, diplomats, meetings with uh, uh, officials of the Czech foreign policy, excursions in the foreign ministry or discussions on current international topics and stuff. And then, as I said, there are also other students organizations like a golf club, a chess club, uh, there's a film club, there's a dancing club, there's a, a classical music uh, group, etc. So uh, I'm sure you will be able to choose and you will be able to join other students either from our faculty or from the all other faculties at the university uh, to meet uh, and join them in those activities. So this is answering Anania's question, I hope. I can go ahead and answer the next questions that I see in the chat, because yes, that's, thank you. That's, that's usually um, what I deal with. So hello, do we need to send the documents via email? Please don't, because everything has to be uploaded in the e-application system. Otherwise, uh, if it's not uploaded in the e-application system, the application is regarded as uh, you haven't provided us with the documents, even though when you try to send them via email. So please do not send anything via email. Uh, there is always an upload option with the e-application, so use that. Next question was, uh, is there a chance to pass entry exams online? Of course, because that's the only chance. We do not have on-site entrance exams. So everything is long distance. Everything you upload uh, either in the application and then the interview is via Skype. So uh, you, don't have, you do not have to be present uh, for any entrance exams because they are not on-site. And the next question was, does the university have a residence? Uh, we have a dormitory. It is uh, something a little bit separate from the university, although it, I mean it has a different management, but uh, it is of the University of Economics Prague dormitory. And uh, yeah, so if you would like to uh, live in the dormitory, you as a student of an English taught program have um pretty much guaranteed spot to live there if you if you if you would like to live at the dormitory um uh, someone says that uh, someone mentioned that the academic director mentioned that you sent essay and motivation letter by email uh no you don't send them and i don't know then if miss uh, anania is asking about the bachelor's program or master's program. Bachelor program, uh, all documents are via the e-application, including the essay. So if you okay, have I'm, uploaded it. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, my mistake. Just listen to Ms. Greeby because she <laughs> knows better than I know. If, if you have uploaded it in the e-application system, then do not email them as well. You do not have to do that. And uh, especially some of you that have already sent or not sent, uploaded the documents, uh, the way you will know that they, they, you met that requirement is that in the system you will see a green dot, um, meaning that you have, you have fulfilled that requirement for the document. There are, I think, two documents related to the bachelor studies that you will have a red dot with pretty much no matter what you do because there is no upload option and it is because it is for uh, the original final uh, high school leaving certificate and we cannot accept that electronically and that will have to be dealt with after the admissions process next question was hello since there is still not specific date and time um, regarding your high school leaving exam, uh, does do we have a deadline for those documents to be submitted? Um, it is a situation for everyone else in the world, including Czech students in Czech high schools. 
So do not worry about it right now because not even Czech students in their high schools do not know how they're going to and when they're going to get their high school leaving certificates. So anything that is uh, anything that is related to the application and admission with regards to the documents, do those do that now, but to prove uh, that you have finished the high school and so on, uh, you just have to do it later. And this you will not be the first case because as I'm saying uh, the situation is the same in the Czech Republic, even for Czech students. Next question is, hello, will the classes in the next term be online? Um, we hope not. Uh, but I mean, it's uh, we do, at the same time, we do not have a crystal ball. So uh, how the situation in the world is going to what it's going to look like, but uh, everything is right now uh, set to start uh, as planned. Another if question. I may, mm -hmm. If I may, to this question, maybe it, it was meant a bit differently uh, that uh, some students, although the classes will not be online, the classes will be at the university, held at the university, some students still uh may uh, be in a situation that they won't be allowed to come to the czech republic uh either by our authorities or by their country's authorities they uh, will uh, be not allowed to leave their country so uh, of course as miss greedy said uh, we don't have a crystal ball and uh, there is a great deal of uncertainty but as far as I discussed that with the faculty management, we are somehow ready to provide the classes in the next semester in the autumn also online. So there would be both a uh, uh, version of classes or the normal uh, version of classes at the university and also online if it is needed. We don't promise that, but we are ready to do that if it is necessary. So basically, yes, maybe if it is necessary, the classes will be also online in the next semester, but hopefully it won't be necessary. Thank you. The next question was um, regarding our professors. Are they English language natives or have international background? Both, uh, it's a combination of both. Some are English native, uh, English, nat uh, English language native speakers. Some have international background. Um, a lot of the a lot of the teachers that um, teach in English also uh, go and teach at our partner universities, so they they definitely have international background. Um, hello, if I may know how many students have applied. Um, okay, a large number has applied, uh, but not everyone has submitted their documents just yet. So I definitely recommend to apply. Um, there are 25 students maximum for our September intake. Next question was, wouldn't it be late if I applied for visa in June? Uh, as you said, the results will be revealed at the end of May. In our experience, no because uh, we have, uh, this is how we've done it for years and there were usually no, no issues with regards to timing of us, of our sending you the necessary documents. Next question was, what if I do not have my school diploma by June 30? Uh, will I still have possibility to apply? You can apply, of course, uh, and then provide us with the uh, high school leaving diploma later on, but it would have to be before the classes start, should you be offered a spot. Um, so the next question is, the students have applied before 30th, which is today. Uh, approximately when can we expect an email about the online Skype interview date? Uh, good question. Um, since today is the deadline, uh, tomorrow is the state holiday, and then the weekend comes. So we hope to have the essays and the motivation letters ready um, in at the begin well um, around May 10th. Uh, that's my that's my expectation, and then around this date, 
or right after you will be you will be invited for the online Skype interview. So um, mid May, the latest you will know you will know about the online Skype interview date. Oh, what additional information are you expecting from the integrated system? Good question, because um, there is um, there is under the documents that you have to upload. There is a there is a place for something that's called additional information. If you do not have it, don't worry about this one. It is for those applicants that, that have some extra uh, curricular activities at their high school or specific language diploma certificates and so on. If you do not have anything like that, you can either leave it blank or you can upload a document saying that you do not have any ad additional information that you would like to add to the application. Next question is, do you offer any scholarships which could lower the original tuition fee? Unfortunately, no, the, the tuition fee is the same for everyone, including the Czech citizens, EU citizens and, and outside of the EU students. Um, however, after one year of your study, you may qualified to receive merit-based scholarship, but it is really um, symbolic, so it's not it's not going to cover the the original or not it's not going to lower much the original tuition fee. Uh, what do you expect from the cover letter? Cover letter, everything, every every document that you require are explained in detail on our website under the uh, admission requirements. So the cover letter is the letter of motivation. Uh, next question was, do I need uh, some specific health certificates before going to Czech Republic uh, due to COVID? And when and where would I need to take such tests? Uh, that we do not know because that is not in the scope of the university, neither our program but it's in the scope of our uh, government and the ministry. So uh, on our website, you can find links that cover uh, the current COVID situation, um, live links where you can um, get acquainted with the most recent updates on what is required. There's also a link to the website of Ministry Interior and what the requirements are, how to cross the border. So this this anything that that uh, involves or is much higher uh, or wider than the university itself, um, you need to follow what the government says or what uh, the what you might be recommended. I do not see any further. Oh no, there is one more. Um, if I unchecked. may also answer the question by Eva. Uh, right now, uh, of course, uh, people coming to the Czech Republic are required to provide uh, test results and or they have to stay quarantined for two weeks. But I think you know very well that the situation is uh, very fluid, very changing quite a lot and it evolves very fast and as you would be coming to the Czech Republic in September we really don't know what the situation be at that time so I'm sure we will send you information before you will be coming here because it will be really it will be changing so checking it now doesn't make any sense because it will definitely change hopefully it will be not as strict as it is now in the September. So just wait and you will see how it works. Thank you. Meanwhile, some more questions have popped out in the chat. So uh, if all the classes, oops, it moved up. If all the classes for next semester are online, would their fees remain, remain the same as the normal fees? Yes. Regarding recommendation letters and extracurriculum documents, my school has to send them as I can't get my hands on them. If the school sends them after the deadline today, will I uh, will I be considered a late applicant? Um, not quite. I understand the end of the question, but um, uh, yes. So um, many applicants were in the same situation that only the school can send them. 
but uh, they can also include it as a, a PDF and uh, uh, upload it onto the website. I've, I think I've dealt with someone uh, who had to do it like this. And then if the school sends them after the deadline today, uh, then you will be considered as an applicant for the next deadline, which is end of June. You will definitely be considered late for today and the uh, documents will not be that you have uploaded will not be processed. Next question is, hello, I'm a student completing the IB diploma. I would like to know whether you need the IB organization to send you the diploma in July directly. Um, I don't know, are you located in the Czech Republic with the IB uh, studies? Uh, the international? Yes, you're in the Czech Republic. Yes, so then I think you don't have to, you, it doesn't have to be sent to us, uh, but uh, you know, once you have it, you can get uh, verified photocopies and you can deliver it to my office in person or just send it by post. It doesn't have to be from the organization. And then, hello, is there a deadline to apply for the residence? Yes, uh, there will be a deadline. Oh, here, uh, our colleague uh, has, has replied to that question too. So the newest information is that the deadline for applications for the dormitory is July 31st. So even if you apply by the second deadline, which is June 30th, you have until July 31st to apply for the dormitory. Next question is maybe we can have a WhatsApp group so we can discuss some problems there. Um, I do not know if that's meant for us coordinators or the people who are in here, but we do not offer WhatsApp groups. Uh, those because the uh, phone numbers are our private numbers, but there is an option to chat with us uh, on Skype and also on our Instagram. Yes, someone has replied to that, so maybe that that's that might be uh, among yourself, the WhatsApp group. Um, yeah, it's the, at the moment it's not available because we have the uh, we have our private numbers there. Yeah, so someone's already organ organizing the WhatsApp group among yourself. Anyone has any other questions via either the chat or uh, you can unmute yourself to uh, I will be available only for 10 some 10 more minutes or so because um, as everything is online, I still have to go at 415 and teach. So I will have to leave this session, but um, next question was. Is the degree internationally accredited in countries like the US? If someone would apply to this and other countries for their masters after studying at the University of Economics Prague? Yes, definitely. It is recognized and evaluated as a bachelor's um, degree in the United States. And uh, University of Economics Prague's master's degrees are evaluated as master's degrees in the US as well. So I think I finished reading up the questions that you have written. Somebody asked, uh, "Hi, compares to other universities in Prague, what do you think makes uh, the University of the Economics different?" Uh, well, we are pretty much the only economics and business uh, related um, university in Prague that is state. We are not we are not a private university, so that definitely makes us different and pretty much guarantees a level of uh, education. And uh, so I don't know how what what else you mean by how they compare. Uh, because uh, the other universities are Charles University, which have different faculties uh, and then technical universities, which have uh, other faculties as well and. Uh, pretty much as the University of Economics Prague, that's the only one in Prague. Uh, interested about career options, where do most of our graduates from this particular program work? Uh, the graduates of the University of Economics Prague and of the Faculty of International Relations 
all receive pretty much the same bachelor's uh, diploma, which will state something like uh, uh, bachelor's in international economic relations. And that 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 is a vast, um, it offers a vast um, number of opportunities to search for jobs, including in diplomacy, international relations, uh, NGOs, uh, also companies, consultancy companies, and so on. Uh, pretty much uh, anything that you can think of, except for lawyer or uh, medical doctor. Will there be an will there be an opportunity to learn a language while studying this program? Definitely yes. Uh, in fact, you have to study each semester. You have to have a class. Uh, you have to have a, have a course of a language. So if you are not a native Czech speaker or Slovak speaker, you study Czech language. If you are um, a Czech speaker, then you study or select languages uh, based on your... Um, pretty much you combine your options of studying languages, but each semester you study at least one course of a language. Yes. Uh, what are the main differences between studying at the public university, uh, like the University of Economics Prague, compared to a private university? Uh, I think it is the reputation and the diploma recognition. I think if I may uh, answer these questions regarding the differences uh, or what is best so special about our school, uh, and comparing it to other universities or schools in Prague that offer similar a similar degree. Uh, I'd say definitely that it's the size of the institutions. We are much larger uh, than any other uh, private uh, or also public university uh, that teaches international relations in Prague. Uh, which is, of course, can be both a uh, positive and negative thing. But on the positive side, you've got many more options regarding a large offer of courses. We've got a lot of uh, stuff, a lot of academics, teachers, also dozens of uh, foreign visiting professors come to our school every year. So we attract, I, I believe, we attract more uh, foreign visiting scholars than any other private school in Prague. And also, as our colleague has already answered in chat, uh, a big difference is the number of our partner universities, currently 252. Uh, none of the private schools in Prague have uh, such a vast network of pra uh, partner universities. And also the awards that we received worldwide, I'm not sure, uh, but I'm almost convinced none of the private schools in Prague so far has received any of these uh, awards by Financial Times at Universal or any other. So these are maybe uh, these are maybe the main differences. Of course, they could be there could be differences also in the tuition fee, etc. But uh, yeah, it's the size, basically, so we can offer more because we are a bit bigger. I will maybe continue with the two uh, other questions, the newest questions here. Uh, so what if I'm not Czech, but I know this language, what language will I study? Um, we will see you will have you will receive a form if you're accept if you're uh, offered a spot at the university which will evaluate your native language and the, the knowledge of other languages. And uh, you can select out of many languages at the faculty, including, or for example, well, but by your name, I'm guessing. I don't want to guess what your native language is, but you can, I'm um, just going to list for everyone else what you can study with us. You can study uh, uh, German, Italian, Spanish, French, Czech, Russian, Portuguese, Chinese. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm now missing some. Uh, the next question was, when will be the deadline 
of the high school certificate um, uploading I heard from former students that it's you submit it after you get an offer. Uh, yes, that's um, what I mentioned before. It is that you provide us with these documents after after the admissions uh, application admission process because that is something completely uh, different. Uh, yes, you're welcome on the information for the languages. Uh, I am very sorry as I have to cut myself out of the session because I it's 16.05 and I teach in the 10 minutes. So uh, I hope that if I know if the academic director or if you have questions and so the academic director will be able to answer them. But I'm really sorry. It was a pleasure to having you here, even though just online and that I do not see you, but at least via chat and Hopefully I'll see you as our students. Bye bye. Bye. Goodbye, Miss Grivy. And thank you. I'm still here, so if you have any other questions, I'm still here to answer them. I just maybe uh, put off my uh, video. You don't have to see me uh, smiling, but I'm still here and I can talk or I can chat with you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'm ready to answer those. And of course, uh, if you check uh, if you check the presentation that we shared, uh, there's also an email. It's very similar to the website address. So the website address is ids.vse.cz, and the email is ids at vse.cz. So if you have any questions or issues, you may uh, email uh, us and we will answer those. And also we have this uh, Skype chat option. So, and the address is the same again, ids.vse.cz. So all these uh, channels are available and uh, you will receive an answer as soon as possible. I know that maybe we were not able uh, to answer some of your questions, uh, but this is mostly uh, due to the situation that is out there that is evolving and changing fast. But uh, if I may comment on that uh, regarding the pandemics and its consequences in the Czech Republic so far, there wouldn't be there there were not any substantial problems or issues here. Uh, of course, the regime right now is quite restricted, but also the consequences are not so harsh uh, than in other countries in the south or west of Europe. So hopefully if we manage to uh, to stick to this uh, tough regime, the situation will get uh, even better during the summer and we will really be able to come back not to a normal regime as before, but to a regime that will be uh, just working for you and for us and you will be able to come to Prague and you will be able to study. So, so the situation is getting better and it's not a very bad at the moment. So hopefully. Uh, I can see one more question from Anania. Could you tell us something about job opportunities and working in Prague both during the program and after graduating as an international student? Well, uh, uh, during studying here in Prague, um, uh, quite a lot of our students uh, work. Mostly, I would say it's some kind of part-time office work. Uh, there are uh, many international or global companies located uh, in Prague, uh, banks or um, financial institutions or IT uh, companies like Google or Microsoft, uh, also the financial and auditing institutions. So yes, there are these 
options uh, for students uh, i think there are options to work during your study although of course it could be quite hard for you somehow to combine a full-time study uh, with a job but quite a lot of our students work during their uh, study in these usually in these international institutions and of course normally not in this unfortunate uh, pandemic situation but normally Prague is also the point of an intensive uh, tourism so there are a lot of opportunities in that respect too I would rather comment on what you can do after finishing your degree. Uh, the truth is that this degree is uh, a new one. So we are starting the bachelor's degree in English just this year. So we don't have any graduates, but we've got graduates of our Czech taught uh, bachelor's degree. And we've got graduates of our both Czech and English master's degree. And bo they both uh, or they all usually go to either to private companies since they have this background of studying at the business and economics school. So this, that makes them eligible to work in private uh, international or transnational companies, not only in the Czech Republic. Um, also, they work quite often for international organizations such as the UN or the European Union or any other uh, international organization you might think of. Uh, for example, Prague is the seat of the European Union's uh, international uh, space agency, Galileo. I don't know. I'm not saying the right uh, the right name. Sorry, but uh, I think you could uh, understand what that means. Uh, and also, there are a lot of NGOs working, uh, focused mostly on development aid or, or on work in the Eastern European region and the post-Soviet area. I know also graduates of our program that uh, work uh, that work at other at a, a lot of different kinds of ministries in their countries. Uh, so of course, public service is also an option. And we've got also graduates that work for the media. So uh, they work for a newspaper or they work for a radio station, etc. Because you will be well equipped with the knowledge of the current uh, world situation. And uh, we will, you will have skills to talk and you will have skills to write hopefully in a in a good manner so uh, this also qualifies you to do that and also some other yeah thanks for to my colleague for <laughs> for giving you the right title of the european global navigation satellite system agency so this is just one example of the international bodies that are located in prague uh, some of our students are also during uh, their studies, now I'm going back to the first part of the question, some of our students are taking internships at the embassies of their countries, of their mother countries located in Prague. I don't know to what extent these internships are paid, maybe not so much or it's not so common, but it's quite useful for you to take an internship even for free because uh, then, of course, it's uh, a job opportunities when you are uh, looking for a job uh, after you finish studying the program. So Prague is quite an international city, uh, so you've got options here. There is also another uh, relatively large city called Brno. It's the second biggest city in the Czech Republic. And this uh, city of Brno is uh, quite uh, a strong IT and IS hub. So there are a lot of 
startups and a lot of uh, IT international, uh, sorry, information technologies and information systems companies are located in Brno. And from Brno, it's very close to go to Vienna. So that's another option. You can go easily to Vienna uh, from Prague by train. It's some four hours. And from Brno, it's some, I guess, just one hour by train. So, and there is the unite one of the United Nations seats. Uh, for example, the International uh, Atomic Energy Agency is uh, located in Vienna. So you have also these options to move to a city that is quite close from Prague, and uh, you can work there afterwards. Uh, then there's a question uh, if IDS is a good choice for students who would like to study at the Czech Diplomatická Akademia. Yes, of course, uh, but to a certain extent, I think uh, the diplomatic academies being there uh, in Prague or elsewhere, uh, public or private, they usually require a master's degree. So uh, after you study, because this is a meeting for those interested uh, in the bachelor's degree, this is not enough usually to enter a diplomatic academy. But if you continue to study a master's degree, either with us or at any other uh, university where it's available, then you may enter either the Czech Diplomatic Academy, uh, this is only for Czech citizens, and we have our graduates that already uh, went through, and it's uh, more than one, it's a few people who already managed in the past year to get through the very strict uh, entrance or admission procedure at this Diplomatic Academy, and now they are diplomats. Uh, in various parts uh, of the world. Uh, also, there is a quite well-known diplomatic academy in Vienna that is a private body, but also they would require you to have a master's degree, I guess. So yes, this is a good start. Uh, this is a good direction, but then you have to continue in the master's. Uh, if you were interested and message us, I would be able to connect you or link you with our graduates that went through the Czech Diplomatic Academy and uh, you could maybe have a chat or email conversation if, with them if they agree. Uh, then another question. Uh, yes, thank you, Catherine. It's okay if you sign off. Uh, if you need to leave, of course, uh, you don't have to stay here. Uh, another question, would you be able to command on Masaryk University Brno compared to Russia? Uh, uh, well, I, I should not evaluate uh, our competition. I should not comment on them, but I will be very polite uh, just uh, comparing the facts. Uh, Masaryk University would be rather comparable to the Charles University in Prague because the Masaryk University is a general university with a lot of faculties. Uh, so you can study medicine, you can study law, you can study social sciences as well as economics, uh, but you can study also IT and uh, all other different disciplines at Masaryk University. So in general, this is a difference because the University of Economics is focused only on studying economics, business, management, and then uh, some selected social sciences like international studies or relations. Uh, this, as I said, this is a mix of political science, economics, international law, cultural studies, etc., etc. So. Um, the um, Masary, Masaryk University as well as the Charles University, they offer a much wider range uh, throughout the different faculties. But if you choose a faculty that would match with, with our program, uh, 
well, I think they are also good. Uh, I we we uh, we are very happy to uh, to cooperate with them, and uh, and I think they would be also a good choice for you. But of course, we will be happy if you come to study with us. I think if you choose to study international relations at the Charles University or at Masaryk University, the study will be more focused on the historical and political aspects of the discipline. While studying at the VSE at our university, you will have a bit more of uh, economics and uh, business uh, knowledge and skills so our uh, degree is not so much oriented on uh, history and political science it mixes really all the various disciplines and there is quite a substantial part of uh, economic training which makes you more flexible and better eligible for a work also uh, in private companies after you finish studying the IDS program. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, so if there are any more questions or if you have any question, I will also post here my private uh, of my university email that goes directly to myself. So if you have any further questions or issues, you may also email me directly. This is my email, r-o-l-e-n-c-j at v-s-e dot c-z. Or you may use the general email that goes to Ms. Greeby and that is i-d-s-v-s-e dot c-z. Or we can have a chat at our Skype. Once again, our Skype posting in check is ids.vse.cz. And the same is the address of our website. So uh, it's quite easily easy, hopefully, for you to connect with us, even in these troubled times. If you were interested once again in um, being put in contact with uh, some of our students right now or some of our graduates, maybe those who went to the Diplomatic Academy, just email me and I'll do my best to find someone uh, who will be able and willing to discuss you any issues and things. So I think we can interconnect you with people, uh, either Czech or foreign born, who studied our program in the past and uh, they can tell you their own experience. So just asking for the last time, whether there are any further questions because otherwise I will thank you uh, for joining us today and uh, I will wish you good health <laughs> and uh, hopefully let's keep calm and carry on. Uh, we are going out of this or out through this uh, uh, alive and uh, we are we hope that we will meet you here in prague in september so if there are no other questions i'm just uh, putting my audio off but i'm still uh, for some time available on the chat so if you have any ideas or issues you may send me a message here on the chat so once again thank you and have a good day goodbye <laughs>